Hello and welcome to the studio. My name is Dean and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to connect your recording gear into GarageBand. We're gonna look at how to plug in microphones, guitars, audio interfaces, headphones, and keyboards to be able to use them inside of GarageBand. And I don't wanna waste your time, so let's dive right in. We'll start with the audio interface because you can't plug a microphone or guitar straight into your computer. You need a translator, a go-between between the instruments and your computer, and that is an audio interface. For most interfaces these days, you simply need a USB cable into the back of your interface and then you plug the other end into your computer and you should see the power light come on your interface. Now that you have your interface plugged in, it's time to see if GarageBand is reading your interface. So you're gonna go to the GarageBand drop-down menu, click on Preferences, and then click on Audio MIDI. Then click on Input Device and see if your interface is listed there as an option to choose in GarageBand. And if it is an option, then go ahead and select your interface as the input device for GarageBand, which means that GarageBand is gonna be ready to receive signals and recordings from your audio interface. Now, if you don't see your interface as an option, that probably means that you need to go to the manufacturer's website for your interface and see if they offer a downloadable driver which helps your interface sync with recording programs. And if you don't have an interface, then I always like to recommend the Focusrite Scarlett Solo as it's easy to use, it runs about $100 brand new, and it syncs automatically with GarageBand. Next, let's talk about how to hook up and use a microphone in GarageBand. Number one, obviously you're gonna need a microphone cable to plug into one side of your microphone and the other end will go into your audio interface. And this cable would be what's called an XLR cable or a three-pronged cable. And then once your microphone is plugged in, here's an important note. If you're using a condenser microphone, you need to hit the 48V or phantom power button on your audio interface, which powers the condenser microphone. Because if you don't hit this button, then no sound can be recorded through your condenser microphone. Now, if you're using a typical dynamic or live performance mic, you don't have to hit the 48V as it doesn't require that extra phantom power to operate. So now that your microphone is ready to go, we're simply gonna create a new track within GarageBand and select the microphone or the audio track. But before you hit create on this track, look down at the bottom of this window where it says my instrument is connected with, and it should state your interface right there. If it doesn't, then you need to click on that button and again, choose your audio interface as your input device. And then lastly, look at where it says input. If your microphone is plugged into the first slot or the first input on your audio interface, then obviously this should be set to input one. If your microphone is plugged into slot number two on your interface, then obviously you would need to choose input input number two. And once you have all that set up, you're ready to hit create and start recording with your microphone. And just as a note, if you wanna hear your voice in the monitor as you record, then be sure to hit the orange monitor button. And also make sure that you're wearing headphones anytime that you record vocals. Next, let's move on to guitars. And this would be any guitar that you're plugging in. So whether that's electric, acoustic, bass, it's all gonna happen the same way. You'll start obviously with a quarter inch instrument cable from your instrument that runs into your audio interface. Now inside of GarageBand, we'll create another track. And if you want just a dry recording of your guitar, then you would choose the microphone or the audio track. But if you want to use GarageBand's presets and amp simulators, then you would click on the guitar track. And just like we did with the microphone, before you hit create, go down to the bottom of the window and make sure that the input matches the input that you've selected on your audio interface. So let me take a quick pause here and say that if you want to double check which input you have selected for any given track, then just hit B on your typing keyboard. And under the recording settings, you'll see a slot that says input. And this will tell you which input you have selected for that track. Next, let's look at plugging in your keyboard to use as a MIDI controller in GarageBand, which means that you can use your keyboard to control the software instruments within GarageBand. The big thing that you have to do is see if there's a USB port on the back of your keyboard. And obviously if it's there, you'll use a USB cable to plug from the back of your keyboard into your computer. Once you've done that, then go ahead and create a new software instrument track within GarageBand and start hitting the keys on your keyboard to see if it plays in 
controls the software instrument that you have selected. If your keyboard is powered, you've plugged it in, you've created a software instrument within GarageBand and nothing is happening when you play the keys, then you probably need to go to the manufacturer's website for your keyboard and see if they have a downloadable driver which will help your keyboard sync with recording programs. Now that said, some keyboards sync and some don't. I would say as a general rule of thumb, the older the keyboard is, the more unlikely that it is that it will connect with a recording program like GarageBand. Now, if you need a keyboard to use with GarageBand, I always like to recommend the M-Audio Keystation 49. Next, let's talk about how to plug in headphones. And this is really pretty simple. If you're using just a regular pair of earbuds, then you're simply gonna plug those right into your laptop or computer. If you wanna use over-the-ear headphones that have a quarter-inch jack, then you're gonna have to plug those into your audio interface. And then for your output device, you need to select your audio interface. So in review, I know all this can seem a bit technical, but if you'll just slow it down, take it one piece, one step at a time, it's actually pretty logical. So if anything in this video felt too fast or confusing, I encourage you to go back, watch it again, hit pause and take it one step at a time. And if I still don't answer the question, then go ahead and leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to those questions in the comment section. So this is Dean signing out from the studio and I hope you feel confident and ready to use your recording gear to make music in GarageBand.